We'll now look at updating the weights that we have generated. In this case I'll be using a weighted version of the pig's head. The skeleton will be imported as geometry. This is geometry which I've created separately. This is bones for the body, neck, head and jaw. We also have bones for the ears. Some of these joints were used for creating transforms for the skeleton. They can also be used for controls, but we do not really need them so I have deleted these points. This gives us our rig. I have applied animations to this rig so we can test the weighting. These poses are actually not particularly good. For an actual rig, poses based on functionality would be better, but these should suffice for now. We are generating the weights with the Bone Capture Lines node and a Tet Embed node. The nodes are then added to the mesh with the Bone Capture by Harmonic node. I am then using a Stash node so that we do not have to update the weights regularly. We should note that once we start modifying weights, any changes to the point order early in the network will break our weights. Since we are going to work on the weights, I am going to turn off the display for the UVs and the textures. This will allow us to focus on the mesh itself. There are three nodes we will use to update the weights. The Capture Correct node could also be included amongst these, but we will not be looking at that now. The nodes we will be using are the Capture Layer Paint node, the Capture Mirror, and the Capture Override node. We will start with the Capture Override as we will generally use this node first. The Override is used to update the weights on specific points. This node is reasonably straightforward and there is a limited amount of options that we can use with it. I will start by selecting a group. This node needs a group of points to work. The capture region will allow us to specify a joint for influence. In this case we will be working with the body. So, why do we want to work on the body? Well this is a bust, and since it is a bust, we do not want the areas around the shoulders, chest and back to move. Currently if I move the neck, the body will move, and if I move the jaw, the body will also move. This also applies to the head. The jaw is also causing the snout to move, and the snout should be controlled by the head. We have set our geometry and our points, and we can now start to work on the override. The first option I will set is normalize weights. This option will guarantee that the total influence of all the weights on the point will be equal to 1. I will start by turning this off. The functionality of this node will be specified by the operations drop down. There are two options that we will use here. Replace existing override and add to existing override. Create override will basically do nothing in this context. It will really just serve as a cache for the current values. Remove override is similar and there is not a large amount that we can do with it which we could not do better with other options. Normalize existing override will allow us to normalize the weights for a specific point. Once again we will generally use the replace and the add override options. The first one we will start with is replace existing override. This will start by removing the weight influences from the body capture region. In this case the colour for the body is red and we can clearly see the line where the influence remains on the points that are not in the group. We can use this node to remove weights. Essentially we will be starting at zero and it will allow us to add the weights back. If we normalise the weights this will go from having no influence to having a total influence. The add override will allow us to start from the base influence of the point and we can add or subtract to the value on the point. Once again we can remove the normalization and this will allow us to set this beyond a standard value. This node will usually give us a lot of warnings. We can usually mitigate this by updating the point colors. Start new weights will reset most of the changes in this node but will retain certain values like update point colors. Reset all overrides will reset the node. There is also a spreadsheet option but this does not work well with KineFX. So that will give us some weights for the body. Next I want another override node for the snout. I will add this node directly after the override for the body. The influence for this node will be the head. And we will need to select points for the group. I will do this in the side view and I will use a lasso selection. 
To make selection easier, I'll set the viewport to wireframe. I can now select the points for the snout and the forehead. These values will be set to 1 in the override. I can add a third override node. I will use this to lower the influence of the head on the lower part of the mesh. The problem with doing random animations is you don't necessarily get the poses you need. I fix this quickly as I need a specific pose with the jaw. Next we're going to paint weights on the mesh directly. To do this we'll get a capture layer paint node. The first input of the capture layer paint node will be connected to the mesh. The second input will be connected to the skeleton. The third input will be connected to the animation. In this case it is generated by our rig pose node. If I drag this node onto a path directly prior to the bone deform node, all the paths should be connected automatically. The capture layer paint node is reasonably complex and there are a lot of parameters. The most important parameters are in the options tab and we'll go through these last. First I'll be looking at the brush tab. The first parameter will be the shape dropdown and this will determine the shape of the cursor. We have two alternative options here. The first is the square cursor. The second uses an image as an alpha. For weight painting I will only be using the circular brush. The most important parameter in the brush tab is the radius. This controls the size of our brush. I will however usually control this interactively in the viewport. We also have a UV radius. This affects the size of the brush in the UV viewport. Generally I would not paint weights in the UV viewport. We then have the radius pressure. This is based off the stylus. This will allow the stylus to determine the radius of the brush. The depth parameters are used when we have the brush oriented to the surface of the mesh. This is done in the stroke tab using the orient brush to surface parameter. The depth will affect how the brush penetrates above and below the surface. I will not be using this parameter. This parameter could actually be turned off for white painting. Use Relative Depth will adjust the depth based off the radius of the brush. Brush Angle and Brush Squash affect the feeling of the brush. I will not change these parameters. The most important parameter after radius is Opacity. This affects how much weight is applied by the brush and is followed by Smooth Opacity. This is used to determine the amount of smoothing applied. Opacity pressure determines how much influence a stylus has on the opacity. Brush splatter and brush grain are effects which can remove control from our brush. They are useful in other contexts, but I will not use them for weight painting. Soft edge affects the fall off for the brush. Zero will give you a hard brush with no fall off. I will leave this as one as a fall off makes it easier to blend the weights. The kernel function will affect the way the fall off is calculated. This is based off metaballs. Finally we have the up vector and this is used to calculate the angle of the brush. So essentially the only parameters that we will really use in this tab are the opacity and the radius parameters. The next tab is the symmetry tab. I will always use reflective symmetry, though both are workable. I will set the axis of symmetry to be 1 in X. By default the brush is symmetrical around the Z axis. I will not change the origin. This is all I'll do to set the symmetry. Symmetry can be a little bit tricky and I will not use most of the other options. Next we have the stroke tab. The first option in this tab is orient brush to surface. This means that your brush will adhere to the surface of the mesh rather than working in screen space. For weight painting I will usually paint in screen space, but this can be useful if you want to be precise and are working in tight areas. Most of these parameters affect how the brush feels. I will not be setting any of these parameters. And most of them will be updated automatically when you are using the brush. We can now look at the operations tab. The first thing that we will set is the capture region. 
This will be the region which we are going to paint. So in this case we'll be painting the influence of the body, and this will have a red colour. Next we have the paint mode. I'll generally leave this as post normalize. This will retain the layers, and the final thing that the node will do is calculate our final weights. Interactive normalize will flatten the layers as they are painted. To illustrate this, I will visualize the weights. I will set visualize layers to be layer only. We will only see the values that we have painted. We will not see any of the values generated by the Bone Capture Biharmonic node. If I interactively normalize the weights, we will flatten all the values and combine the existing weights with the weights that we have painted. Next we have the maximum and minimum paint values. We can use these to restrict the brush to specific values. So in this case I can force the weights to be 50%. This can give us a very specific control over what we are painting. This is very useful if you want absolute control over the weights. Then we have the brush operations. We have an operation for the left mouse button and another one for the middle mouse button. The right mouse button will allow us to change these in the viewport. We then have the option of setting modifiers for the brush. These are used if we hold shift and control while painting. By default, Shift will be Smooth Final. This will smooth the existing weights as well as the weights painted by you. Control will be set to Smooth Layer, which will have the effect of smoothing the weights which you have painted. This will have no effect on the original weights. If we use Visualize Layer only, we'll see the current layer. I will set this region to Final Layer for painting. For the visualization, I will not want to see all the regions as it is far easier to see what you are doing when you are only viewing a single region. There are quite a few options for visualizing the region. The first is infrared. This will be purple where we have no weights and will be red where the weights are equal to 1. The next option is white to red, which is the standard visualization for a lot of the masking tools in Houdini. We then have grayscale which is followed by black body, which is like a heat map to show the weights. And finally, we will have two-tone. Generally, I'll work with grayscale as this is the most readable. Now I'm going to do some basic weight painting. This will not be particularly good, but it will serve as an example. I will set symmetry. This will be reflective and will be symmetrical along the x-axis. My first operation for this rig will be for the body. I'm going to work on my final layer, and I'm going to work on the selected capture region. I will be working in grayscale. I will be adding influence to the body so that the jaw is no longer deforming it. The next joint is for the jaw, which is the primary joint which we will be painting. When we select the jaw, we'll find that it is influencing a lot of regions that it probably shouldn't. I will not remove these weights as it is usually better practice to add the influence of the joints that should have the influence here. The jaw is one of the places where we should have used a capture override node to make sure we had better weighting before starting to paint. I'll start by setting the opacity to 1 as the inside of the mouth and the lip should be weighted completely to the jaw. We will initially have a pretty ugly deformation for the jaw. Here I will paint the influence and then smooth the result using the shift modifier. I will then reset my opacity and I'll smooth out the jowls. If I was working on an actual rig, I would try to be more methodical. I can start smoothing out the corners of the mouth. Now I'll alternate between weighting the jaw and the head. The palate of the mouth should be weighted to the head, so I will increase the influence. I will then continue smoothing the corners of the mouth and cleaning the influence for the head. This is not a particularly good result, but I will leave it as this. The main thing that we are looking for is to have smooth edge loops on the deformed geometry. If the start and the extreme are both smooth, we should have a smooth interpolation between them. 
Very often you'll find that the symmetry on the capture layer paint node is not sufficient. Sometimes you'll also need to paint sections of the mesh without symmetry and apply symmetry later. As an example of this, I've painted some weights on the ear. This is not pretty, but it will serve as an example. What I want to do is apply the weights for these points symmetrically. To do this, I'm going to use a capture mirror node. When selected, this node will have a gizmo which will show how symmetry is applied. The first option is the group, and I will need to select points for mirroring. The points I select will be on the ear, and I'll grow the selection with Shift G. Since I prefer to have the selection be the part of the mesh that I want to mirror, I'll set this group to be the source. So we'll use the selected points as the source for our mirrored weights. The capture type will be bone. In this case, I'll leave the origin, the distance, and the direction as their defaults. The appropriate bones should then be selected. In this case, the source will be the left ear, and we'll be mirroring the values to the right ear. It is also possible to update the colors, but I'll leave them as they are. Then, to actually mirror the weights, I'll set the behavior to be copy unmirrored points. We should now have our weights mirrored, and that will cover the main nodes that will be used for modifying the weights. Next, I want to look at accessing information from the weights, as well as storing the weights.